My name's Guy Kesteven and I've been a professional bike and kit reviewer for nearly 25 years. And I've already introduced you to uh, the Pace RC295 uh, Trail Assassin project, uh, which is kind of its working title at the moment. We'll see whether it lives up to that uh, once we've got it on the trail. And obviously I have now progressed significantly, uh, despite some hiccups last night. Uh, this one went late, I can tell you. Uh, well, it went till this morning and then a couple more hours beyond that. Uh, but anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, as you can see, we now have a rolling, stopping, sitting on, holding onto chassis uh, composed of mostly pre-used kit. There's some fresh, uh, there's some fresh examples of stuff I've used before and really rate. And there's some brand new stuff on here as well. And there's a very, very old and uh, rather freaky friend uh, that I've dug out for this build as well. So I'm going to come over there, I'm going to grab the camera and talk you through the details. So uh, Pace do uh, obviously do complete bikes and they do rolling chassis setups. So I've kind of deliberately followed uh, suit to a certain degree on them, uh, not least because they've chosen the componentry really, really well. So up front you have a RockShox Pike Ultimate, 42mm uh, offset 29er in 150mm travel. Pretty much the absolute benchmark for it right now. And obviously it's just been updated with a slightly different air spring. So it's a little bit tighter, rides a little bit higher in its travel. So that should suit this, uh, you know, what is a really tight handling, accurate bike. Uh, we've also got Hunt Wheels on here. Uh, it's uh, the carbon high impact wheels. I've already done a test video on those, so I'll link that in. I'll probably put a little flag up the top there. Uh, so not super light, uh, 1900 grams the wheel set, but you've got this uh, deliberately kind of, uh, well, yeah, it's, I guess deliberately compliant, uh, slightly flexible front wheel with a lower spoke count and then this tighter, harder driving rear wheel. You've got super quick uh, free wheel engagement, on, free hub engagement on there. Oh, there's, I can't show you that because there's actually uh, no cassette or free hub on there for reasons which I would explain later. And you've got these uh, high impact carbon rims. So super strong, extra thick wall rims, which means I can run really, really low pressures and properly uh, put some traction underneath this bike. Uh, wrapped around them, you have got the uh, new Maxxis Dissector uh, 29 by 2.4. So that's uh, right on the limit of what pace are happy with you running on here. Still decent clearance to be fair. And it's kind of like a... Best way to sum it up, kind of like a modern high roller, I'd say. It's a mix of all sorts of different tread patterns, really. But So you've got a bit of a gap there. There's a bit of a leap of faith from uh, centre to edge. But really fast rolling, uh, but good aggressive grip. So faster than DHR, faster than DHF, definitely faster than Asagai, uh, but with a bit more sort of grip and bite than lighter tyres like sort of Forecaster uh, and uh, Recon. So... Pretty much a sweet spot tyre. Uh, really, I'm, I'm, I've not ridden it a massive amount in wet conditions yet because there haven't been any, but that's changed over the past few nights. So should be a really good match. And because they roll so fast, I'm quite happy going front and rear on them. And again, 29 by 2.4, and it's the Max Terra 3C compound on these. To uh, match the RockShox fork and to match the uh, RockShox Deluxe Shock, uh, and because it's what uh, Pace put on their own spec, uh, RockShox Reverb uh, Dropper Post. Again, pretty much, you know, very well proven. Uh, it's the oh, still the only fully hydraulic system on the market. You've got I've gone for these uh, sweep trigger levers underneath here, so super sensitive feel on them. Uh, obviously, need to might <laughs> from the feel of that, I might need to be, do a bit of a bleed before I head out because uh, obviously I had to uh, pull them apart to thread them through. And a warning: trying to thread. The uh, dropper pipe or cable run, whatever you're using, past that, uh, past the internal cylinder for that bearing there. Absolute ruddy fight. Uh, there was a lot of Anglo-Saxon language used, and uh, Adrian nearly got a WhatsApp at well past midnight, just going, "How? How is this possible?" So, if you're thinking of getting a frame build up, I would suggest that uh, if you're doing it via a shop or doing it via Pace themselves. Ask them to uh, feed the uh, cable through it uh, before they send it. So sorry to drop that on your pace, but you made this. You can sort that uh, 
clearance issue out there because it is a fight i'm not gonna lie uh also got internal cable routing for the rear brake and for the gears that isn't so bad to be honest because you've got these uh big clip down clip out uh sections there and so once you've fed it up and it goes through these guide pipes under here so you know there is a bit of a bit of exposure uh, for your control lines there but it actually comes with this kind of reinforced uh, sheaths to protect it from any impact so that wasn't the fight it could have been you know there was a bit of threading and uh, jiggery pokery but you know it's obviously not as simple as a frame that uses uh, fully plumbed internal uh, channeling but then it's not priced like a frame with those kind of features and once you've got it set up you know it's set up and obviously if you're buying a complete bike it's not an issue so uh going to some brand new stuff on this bike oh actually while we're here uh the brakes uh it's a set of uh sram ultimate g2s so uh again 108 mil rotor on the rear it actually comes standard you can't actually fit a 160 on there i was going to put a 160 to save a bit of weight and because also i've got a really bad habit of over braking at the moment so i was going to deliberately restrict my braking power but not an option uh you have to have 180s on there so i've gone for a 200 up front to balance things out uh, i mean obviously not as powerful as a code and if i'm honest i was gonna uh try and uh, shoehorn these beauties onto there and yeah, let me uh let you go close up because in tragic fashion because in tragic fashion these are uh, a set of personalized guy kestivan uh code uh ultimate brakes that uh i was sent when they launched the brake but two issues with that uh for a start it doesn't say guy kestivan it says kestivan guy which is fine it just makes me sound like i went to public school or i've been in trouble uh and also down the end here is a very very red caliper which goes beautifully with a lyric fork but this hasn't got a lyric fork um i just i just i just didn't think it would work so at about quarter to two this morning what i was trying to do was uh oh sorry about that uh i was trying to actually uh replace these levers and see if they fit onto these levers but and it's very very close but it's not quite an exact fit so uh We've just had to slum it with a set of, you know, ultimate trail levers. If that isn't a first world problem, I don't know what is. And then while we're on the cockpit, we have got a mix of very, very new, uh, recycled and very, very old. So first is the recycled bits. Uh, these are the new Bjorn grips from ODI. There you go, Bjorn, recycled grips. So, uh, you know, made for Bjorn Bikes dot com and it's a fully recycled grip as the name would suggest and uh, it's quite an interesting tread pattern actually because uh you've got these little uh, square bits on the bottom you've got a smaller one underneath and the whole grip is kind of offset so there's more padding on this back side there where you need it and so it's you know it'd be you know quite a fat grip but with an ergonomic shape so uh, interested to see how i get on with them always been a big fan of odi grips and obviously huge amounts of options so uh Plenty to play out in terms of grips. Uh, moving along, uh, SRAM also sent me this fantastic Descendant Carbon Bar, 800mm wide, really stiff. Again, a great match to the precision of the bike. And they also sent me a stem, but I haven't used it, sorry, uh, because I really, really, really like the way this bike handled with Pace's own 32mm stem, which is just, as you can see, super short. I mean, it's basically as short as you could possibly have a stem uh, and still have the steerer moving behind the bar. The only way to get it shorter than this is to use a percenti stem and bar with the kind of P-dent on the back. But you don't get them in 35mm, so they're not quite as stiff and accurate. Then, if you're wondering what this is, there's there's a cracking story to this. This beautiful, handmade, silver and semi-precious stone embedded headset spacer... Uh, was sent into Maximum Mountain Bike magazine when I was editor in 1999, and it came from a jeweler up in Tyneside, somewhere or Teesside, I think. Uh, just sent it in with a handwritten letter, and to be fair, uh, it was this really, really scary, spidery handwriting, and we were a bit freaked out in the office, to be honest. Uh, but since then, I have used this headset spacer whenever I've kind of wanted it 
a talisman from kind of ill fortune and punctures. And I have to say, it's worked extremely well so far. It normally lives on my tandem, but uh, because the uh, headset, because the head tube is so short on this bike, and because at some point I will be sending the frame back, I needed to keep the steerer a bit longer on the fork than I normally would have done. So there was always going to be a bit sticking up the top. So why not uh, get the... Uh, Crazy bejeweled, uh, I think I, I believe we refer to it as the crazy bejeweled uh, cock space. Well, that's not quite what we called it at the time, but uh, I won't be able to tick the uh, you know child friendly uh, guidelines if I tell you exactly what we called this. But uh, I tried googling it to see if the guy's still doing them, uh, but I couldn't find anything. But thank you very much for sending it in, and 21 years later, it is still going strong. and hasn't even lost any of its uh, little jewels in there. I think it's tiger's eyes and agate and some amber and all sorts of stuff. Uh, moving out to the other side of the bar, you have got a missing gear shifter uh, because I can't fit these gear shifters and tell you about them until three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, so uh, whether I'll get the video done and actually hit that embargo, who knows? But if not, uh, go on to Bike Perfect and there'll be a press release on there and then I'll follow up with the video on here as soon as possible. Uh, moving back on to the con no, last of the contact points, brand new SDG Bel Air 3 saddle. Absolute classic saddle, uh, completely redesigned, reimagined. I mean, obviously some similarities. You've still got this kind of cutaway underneath. Can you see it there? Uh, you know, to uh, a bit of pressure relief. Uh, still a relatively conventional shape, though. You've got, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. I'm just going to read it off here. Uh, you've got a slight rear rise platform. You have, for optimum power and comfort from sitting position, hidden undercut, free float comfort flex, which enhances pedaling efficiency while reducing pressure. Atmos seal construction, which means uh, there's no bumpers, and lightweight EVA injection foam with sonic welded protected edges. Well, that all sounds rather splendid to be sat upon uh, while, uh, well, while sitting on my pace and telling it that I, uh, that I love it. Uh, so, what am I on about? Uh, it's the new SDG Bel Air saddle. It arrived a couple of days ago, so where else was it going to go? But on this project build, and if I get on with it as well as I've done with the previous FD SDG saddles, very happy days. So I think that's actually everything covered, apart from obviously the transmission. But like I say, uh, I can't actually uh, tell you about that until later this afternoon when uh, it breaks cover and everyone will be uh, talking about it. So I'm going to fit it now, uh, take some photographs and hopefully get a video shot in time to get it online somewhere close uh, to that three o'clock uh, timeline. So that's the rolling, holding, sitting, stopping chassis build up complete. Uh, like I say, I've got some work to do to uh, get the gears on, but I can't show you those just yet. Really happy that this has already uh, caused quite a lot of interest and comments and excitement that I'm building up this RC295. I'm certainly really excited to be building up. As you can see, I'm going for a, a, currently a relatively traditional kind of hard hitting uh, trail build on this bike. We'll see where I take it over time, uh, but that's kind of, you know, that's what it's designed for. That's what that super slack long geometry is all about. So. Let's see how far we can go with that before, uh, you know, maybe throwing in some uh, more interesting thoughts into the mix. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Please subscribe if you haven't. It makes it a lot easier to kind of approach uh, manufacturers and other people to get stuff onto the channel. Uh, thank you. Click for notifications so you get the next build phase of this and the live ride and all kinds of stuff like that. And all of that stuff will probably be appearing first on Patreon, which is my uh, sponsored channel for subscribers. And these, including these fine folk, uh, they all contribute a very small monthly fee towards the upkeep of this channel, and they get exclusive early and extended edits on Patreon, as well as some other perks. Uh, generally, it's just, uh, I kind of chat kind of chat to people more on there, give them more advice. Or I mean, I'm always keen to help people out, but, you know, those guys deserve a bit more support, and I try and give them that. So. If you think you can spare $3 a month, it would be fantastic uh, if you could uh, help towards, you know, making more unsponsored, uh, otherwise, you know, unpaid for uh, edits like this. 
thank you very much for your time anyway. Uh, thanks to Hunt, thanks to Rock Shocks, thanks to uh, SDG by Silverfish, thanks to ODI, thanks to the Mystery Jeweler from uh, Gateshead, I think it was, thanks to Maxis and everyone else who's kind of, you know, sent kit in for this build project. I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV, and this is part two of my RC295 Trail Assassin project build.